Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick tutorial about working with prefabs in Unity. Um, so this is going to be kind of like an intro level of how to understand how to work with assets in Unity, but this is, I think, some pretty important foundational materials. So uh, the first thing I wanted to say is that every object you have in your scene with very few exceptions, should be a prefab. And the reason is that you don't want to be making changes to objects in your scene that are going to need revisions later on where you have to then go into every individual scene and make those same changes. So, uh, for example, uh, let's go ahead and make a really simple prefab. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go to 3D Object, and I'm going to create a cylinder. Um, and then I want to make a cylinder that is essentially like um, kind of like a light fixture. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the property of these um, the scale so that it's about 0.25 in the X and the Z. So it's a little bit more um, more narrow. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a uh, kind of like a sphere on top of it. And then this is just again for kind of like informational introductory purposes. Um, I'm going to, so uh, in this sphere uh, is going to be kind of like the light component of the uh, of this light object. And again, it's really, really simple. But um, so, okay, so what I want to do is I want to make this into a prefab that I can then apply in other places. So what I want to do is I want to take these objects and I want to combine them together. So the, the easiest way to do that is to use Unity's hierarchy. So in this case, I think I'm going to take this sphere and I'm going to put it on top of the cylinder so that the cylinder now, uh, every time I grab the cylinder, there's also the sphere connected to it. So if I move it around, it'll and I'll move around with it. Um, but I want to make this into a prefab so that I can use it in the future. So um, I'm going to make a prefab, and I'm working in a test scene, but um, I'm going to go to the prefab folder, and I'm going to call this test prefabs. And uh, then what I'm going to do, there are two ways of making prefabs. One of them is to go to create and select prefab, but I literally never do that. What I always do um, is I name whatever my root object is. Um, so I, in this case, I'm going to call it uh, light post. And then I'm going to drag that into the project, and then that makes it a prefab. So literally all I have to do now is I have to take that out, and then I have prefabs of this light post. Um, now that that's a really really basic kind of approach, but let's let's say I want to suddenly realize that I want to make some changes to this. So, like for example, maybe this light post doesn't look super realistic to me, and I'd really like to change it so that it uh, has like maybe it's a little bit narrower. Um, so I do that, but then that, that didn't kind of work with my sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my sphere back to a scaling of. Uh, one, but I noticed that what's weird about that is that um, the sphere's scale is actually now based on the scale of the light post. So this means that if I change something about the light post, um, it's going to change all of the other properties of the dependent objects. And since I want to have a different scale on the post that I do on the sphere, um, this could cause a lot of like annoyances. So in some cases, when I'm doing things that are kind of compound objects, what I like to do is create an empty game object instead. Um, and in this case, uh, I want to make it at 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to make this object at 0, 0, 0, which is actually right at the floor where my light post is going. Um, and instead of the other piece being light post, I'm going to actually call this new game object light post. Um, and then I'm going to stick the other objects inside of it. And I'm going to rename the post to just post. And I'm going to rename, uh, I'm going to drag the sphere out. And then I can scale that separately without having it be dependent on the post that it's attached to. Um, 
but I, I still have to do something because right now, technically, that post is actually the prefab. So if I were to hit apply, that would then make it so that my light post is now just this post. Um, but fortunately, prefabs are really, really easy to overwrite because all I have to do is just grab the object that I want and drag it into the prefab and then select replace. And then all of a sudden, I will have all of the versions of this light post based on the right properties. Then if I ever want to make a change to this, so let's say I want to make a new material. So I'm going to go ahead and in my materials folder, I'm going to search for something that I think like works for a material. So in this case, I want to make that the, uh, the piece is uh, gold on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Um, I just dragged the gold onto this one. And then once I hit apply, then all of the ones that have the, um, all of the other versions of the same prefab will then have that change to work for that. Um, so basically, um, there's a couple of things that you want to watch out for. Um, one of them is if I go ahead and change any part of a prefab, I don't have to apply it. So if I were to change this to green, I could say, okay, I want this to be the same prefab as all of these others. And this actually kind of looks like a, kind of like a lollipop, but, um, so I want this to be green and I don't want to change any of the others, but that comes into kind of an awkward problem because then maybe at some point I decide I actually don't want that to be green and I just drag the gold back and I'm like, okay, well now that's back to normal, right? Um, but maybe I then go back to another one of these and I say, I want to go ahead and actually change all of them from being gold to instead being blue. Um, so if I go ahead and then I apply this prefab, you'll notice that one of them actually didn't change. And the reason it didn't change is because I didn't apply the change that I made to just this one. And prefabs operate on the premise that anything that you change within the prefab and don't apply, then basically breaks the continuity with the other objects. So a good way to figure out what's happening there is to look at if anything on a prefab is in bold. So right here, element zero with the gold um, material is written in bold. So that means that it actually has been changed and it's not applied to the rest of them. So another good example of that is like, let's say I wanted to make this actually look more like a lollipop. Um, if I were to set this value to one, then you'd notice that the scale is now in bold as well. Um, but maybe I look at this and I'm like, wow, this one looks really bad and I really don't want to do this. Um, I want to go ahead and actually revert this. And all I have to do is I have to just hit the revert button on the prefab. And then that will change to whatever the default state of the prefab is. Um, now this is all like kind of the basic stuff, um, but I think it's really, really important to understand how you, you handle this kind of stuff. Um, because in the long run, if you created this kind of an object and we're just populating it all the way around your scene, um, you have a lot less control than if you're working with a prefab. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to draw your attention to, um, the kind of the more advanced aspect of this, is talking about when you start bringing in your own objects. Um, and this one is a little bit more counterintuitive, but let's go ahead and uh, in my test prefabs folder, um, I'm actually going to, to make a new folder and I'm going to call this folder car. Um, and I'm actually going to just import a car from my, uh, my source content. So I'm going to make, uh, I'm actually going to bring in a four door car and a moving truck. Um, so I'm going to drag those in here. Um, and then it'll come in with materials and it'll have the four door car and it'll have the moving truck and all that kind of stuff will be good. Um, so, what you'll notice is that this is an FBX, which has an icon that is kind of like a, um, 
a prefab icon, except it has this kind of file uh, page on it. And that means that if you click on it, you can go and you can edit all the properties about this. Um, but what's worth noting is if you drag this FBX directly into the scene, you can't make any changes to that FBX that will ever apply to any other versions. So let's say, for example, I'm going to make... Um, I'm going to make a, a floor here really quick. So I'm just going to make a plane and I'm going to get make it about 10 units in dimension. Um, let's say I want to add some uh, changes to the materials here. So like, for example, um, I maybe I don't like this material and I just want it to be a gold car instead. Um, and so then I drag this gold material onto the car. Um, and then I'm like, okay, well, this is pretty much how I want the car to be. Well, if I ever go back to the FBX and I drag that four-door car out, it still has the exact same material that it had originally. Um, and that's because you can't change those properties. You can't change a material property on an object like this. And in fact, the FBX even shows the mesh renderer, the animator, all that kind of stuff is grayed out. So you can't make changes to it, even if you wanted to. Um, all you can really do is you can go in, you can change the material that it has there currently, but you can't change which material it is. You can't mix up any of those properties. So the only thing that I can do if I want to save that is I make it my own prefab. Um, and again, this is really easy to do. All you have to do is just drag this FBX back into the project and it makes it its own prefab. So then if I drag that out, then I will always be able to have that change. Um, and there's a lot of times where you might want to do more complex stuff with a prefab. So like, for example, maybe I'm, I'm going to go and rotate the, the sun here so that it looks like it's kind of uh, late in the evening. Um, and I want to make a, uh, a set of headlights for this car. So I'm going to go ahead and actually make a few spotlights, just a couple of spotlights. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to rotate them so that they look like they're shining out in front of the car. And I'm going to adjust their intensity a bit. So change the uh, spotlight angle, change the range a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and maybe make them like a little bit of an orangey light. And then I'm going to hit Control D, make a copy of that. Um, and then if I want to apply this to the car, um, the easiest way to do that is probably to just drag them to be under my four-door car and then hit Apply. And then if I drag that prefab out again, then I will have the lights attached to that. Um, and this is something that's pretty foundational to everything that you work in in Unity. Um, you really do want to work with prefabs all the time. If you're just dragging FBX out into the scene, you're going to find that almost every even minor change that you want to make will not be possible. Um, so now that we've talked about that a little bit, uh, let's talk about changing aspects of prefabs. Um, because so, for example, in this case, I might want to actually change what type of vehicle this is. Um, now, the easy way that I could do that is I could start saying, OK, I want to just drag out a new vehicle. So in this case, maybe I have this uh, this truck. And the truck is a little bit big. But um, maybe I want to like just rename the truck and overwrite the, the four door or something like that. Um, but that might not be something that's particularly uh, time efficient because there are some objects that have lots of scripts on them or they have lots of functionality on them. Um, so what I could do in cases like that is I could go to my mesh filter and I could change which mesh filter it's using. So for example, I could go in and I could just drag the moving truck base into the, um, the mesh filter of my four door. And then now it's using the mesh filter of that truck. But because I didn't change anything about the mesh renderer, the mesh renderer is still using the same materials and properties there. Um, so 
that should give you an idea of some of the things that you can do when you're modifying things. Um, but let's go through, and because I, I grabbed the tanks project as kind of an example of um, where you might go about editing um, functionality in a game. So um, if I go to the complete folder in tanks, I can go to the complete scene. I won't save that. Um, and then if I just run this, we'll notice that we have these uh, these tanks that all um, drive around. They've got a little bit of like a texture property here. Um, I can fire tank shells and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so maybe I want to make it so like in my version of tanks, I want to actually make it so that that vehicle is not the tank, but it's like my four-door car instead. Um, so what I need to do is I need to figure out where that tank is coming from. Um, and sometimes you can do something as simple as just adding in um, the... Uh, the search term for something like tank. So in this case, I know that there's actually a complete tank prefab. Um, but another thing that's worth noting is that if you take a look at the game systems, the game manager actually says what the tank prefab is. Um, and then if that's still something that you have a hard time figuring out, um, you can just play the game and then you can hit pause. And then after you've paused it, then you can look at what the tank actually is. So if I click on this complete tank clone, then I can see that there's this tank that has all of these scripts on it, and um, I can see what the name of it is so that I could then type in complete tank, and then I can easily find that there. Um, so let's go ahead and edit this tank. Um, now, what, there's a few ways that you can do this, but what I usually try to do is when I edit prefabs, I only edit them in like a blank scene. I don't edit them in their actual direction or their use location because um, that's something that is going to create uh, a little bit more complications, like if I put it in the wrong place or I can't really see it. Um, so I'm just going to, without saving this, I'm going to go into the complete tank, drag it out into an empty scene here. Um, and then I'm going to replace the model here. Now, this model was actually set up very easily because if you expand the hierarchy here, the tank renderer just has all of these um, chassis, the tracks, uh, the uh, track left and right, all that kind of stuff, and then the tank turret. So in this case, if I want to replace this with something that's my own, all I actually have to do is under this tank renderers section, I just have to delete these. Um, and then I can find my car and I can, um, I can either drag out the FBX or I can drag out the prefab. Um, in this case, I'm gonna drag out the prefab. I'm gonna make sure that it's zeroed out. Um, and I'm gonna rescale it so that it's a little closer to the size of the tank. And um, make sure that it's above the ground, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that prefab into the tank renderer's prefab. Now, this is something that's going to be a little bit interesting, and this is a bit confusing in some cases. But um, this prefab, this four-door prefab, only exists until I have not applied its parent prefab. Once I apply the complete tank prefab, then this um, four-door no longer will be its own prefab. And this is because Unity doesn't support nesting prefabs. Um, and this is something that's important to know. A lot of times you've just got to be mindful of that. Um, but if you go ahead and then apply the complete tank, then we have the four-door. We have a spotlight for each of them for the lights. And then we have, because none of this stuff has been really messed up by it, um, we can just go and probably have all of the functionality that we need to have here without any additional um, issues. Now, the only other thing that I might want to say here is that because I, we have like kind of a dust trail here, uh, we want to make sure that the dust trails are loosely around where the, uh, where the wheels of the car are. And it looks like they are, so um, that seems like that's pretty good. Um, so then, okay, we can apply that. Then we can jump back into our complete scene. 
I can hit play. And you'll notice that I now have these uh, car models running around in tanks instead of the tanks. And because I'm using all the same scripts on it, it works fine. And it doesn't have any problems running, even though it uh, I completely swapped out the mesh. And that's something that's worth noting is trying to make sure that when even when you're working on your own projects, that you're using prefabs as a way of working non-destructively and being able to make changes in your environment as a whole. Um, so I think I'm going to wrap that up now um, because that's probably a good introduction to how prefabs work. Um, I advocate using individual prefabs for everything in your game so that you can easily make changes to it without having to make changes to multiple objects. Um, and really just, it's, it's about keeping organized, making sure that you have the ability to make extensive changes without many uh, difficulties, and then just really improving your workflow. So um, uh, one last thing I'll probably say that I do uh, when I'm working with uh, 3D models, um, a lot of times what I'll do is uh, so to use the um, the car as an example. Um, what I'll often do is I'll go and I'll create a folder, say called art, and that'll be my art folder where I put everything. Um, then I'll have a folder called vehicles, and then inside that folder I'm going to drag my folder called car, um, and. This can look a little bit confusing because there's a four-door, which is the FBX, and then there's a four-door, which is the prefab. And you don't want people to ever use the FBX. So what I usually do is I create this folder called source content um, or source assets. And I put an underscore at the beginning so it'll always show up on top. Um, and then I just take all the things that are relevant to that model out of it, and I stick it in the source assets. And then I just leave the prefab out at, as the thing that you can just easily grab and place. Um, and so then if you have to go deeper into that, then you go into the source assets, and then you see the parts that are not supposed to get directly applied to the scene, such as the actual car, the actual truck, um, the materials, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and that's just, I think, is useful as an organizational step. It's not something that you have to do, but I think it can be very helpful. So um, with that, I'm just going to wrap up this tutorial thanks for uh taking a look and for seeing some of the tips that i have about working with and using prefabs in unity um i appreciate it and you guys have a good day